What's up guys, today we're gonna to talk about unit, or topic 2.4, which is uh, price indices and inflation. Uh, we'll talk about inflation, disinflation, deflation. Then we're gonna talk about the CPI, or pr consumer price index, and then substitution bias, and then the limitations, uh, that, uh, the limitations of the CPI. All right, so um, again, topic 2.4, price indices and inflation. All right, so essentially what is inflation? Inflation is, uh, and we see it every day, right? Where we see it uh, from time to time, especially those of us that have our uh, cars already. Uh, we're putting in gas, right? Sometimes we see gas prices are real low and then we see a little bit of inflation or we see that gas prices start to inflate or get higher, right? That's uh, inflation, okay? Uh, just think of whenever you're inflating a tire, right? Um, inflate, that's just price levels increasing, right? Um, now, how do we measure that? How do we measure how much uh, inflation is occurring, right? So, um, again, inflation is the general uh, raise, uh, the rising general levels of prices, and it reduces the purchasing power of money, right? So by purchasing power, that's how much you can buy. And again, if you're on a fixed income of, let's say, like $10 a week, right, and gas is only $2 a gallon, and you're buying, five, you can buy five gallons of gas a week, right? Well, if uh, there's inflation, right, and it inflates to, let's say, $5 a gallon, right, gas is now $5 a gallon, it's, uh, you know, more than doubled, then um, your purchasing power is less. You're able to only buy two, two gallons of gas as opposed to the five gallons you were able to purchase earlier. So you have less power with your, with your money, right? So, um, again, this uh, inflation is going to reduce your purchasing power. So... Uh, when inflation occurs, each dollar of income will uh, buy fewer and fewer goods. And we saw that, right? We, or we just talked about that, right? There's two gallons as opposed to the five gallons that you were able to purchase on a $10 uh, a week income, right? Okay, so um, now, uh, is inflation a good thing or a bad thing? So uh, in general, high inflation, right, is bad, right? And it's bad because... Uh, banks don't lend out money and people don't save, right? And well, let's think about that. Well, one, people aren't saving money. And so banks, it's harder for banks to make loans, but we'll see that in a later unit, right? But it's also, you know, if inflation's occurring and it's occurring really rapidly or really it's becoming really high, um, banks also have to charge interest rates. And so they have to raise their interest rates to, uh, to get their money back, right? And then of course, people are not saving because they're using all of their money that they were before, that what they were possibly saving, right, is now going to, uh, is now going to purchase the things that they were purchasing, right? So, uh, you know, earlier we talked about gas and it being two dollars, right? And you are on an income of ten dollars. Well, let's think about this. If if we're on that on that same fixed income of ten dollars a week, right? Well, maybe we put, you know, maybe we only buy four gallons of gas, right? And so. Uh, that extra two dollars goes to our savings account, right? Um, but in this, you know, in this situation where we have inflation and now gas is, uh, you know, five dollars, you were only able to purchase two gallons of gas. Well, you were able to purchase four earlier, so you're not having any money left over to save, right? So that, uh, you know, creates a, a bigger problem, and we'll see that a little bit later, right? So um, this is going to lead to a decrease in investment uh, and in GDP, right? And because consumers are not, you know, they're spending more dollar-wise, right? But they're not buying as many goods, right? Um, as they were before. Um, so what about deflation? So deflation is the decrease in uh, general prices or a negative inflation rate, right? And we've seen negative inflation rates in, uh, in the United States. There were some times where there was uh, some periods where there was negative inflation rates. Uh, Japan has used negative inflation rates. Um, but this is also going to decrease consumer spending and decrease GDP. Now, um, deflation is bad because people are going to then start to, you know, it's the opposite of inflation, right? Now people are going to start hoarding their money, right? Everybody's going to take money and they're going to start putting it into their savings account, right? And, uh, and instead of spending it, um, so you want to have that kind of have that happy median of, you know, people spending, uh, you know, so you want a little bit of inflation, but not too much inflation. You don't want too too little deflation, right? You think maybe as a consumer it's good to have deflation, but that's that's not uh, not the not the case. And then so uh, disinflation is when prices uh, uh, prices increase at slower rates, right? So we see uh, disinflation when you have increasing prices at uh, at very slow rates. Okay. 
So how is inflation measured? The government tracks the prices of specific market baskets that included, uh, include the same goods and services, right? And there's two ways to do this. There's looking at the inflation rate, right? And then there's looking at the price index. So um, we're going to look at the CPI, right? And that market basket is, think of this, think of if you go in a, a, a grocery store and you uh, have a shopping cart, right? And so you want to put things in that shopping cart that you know people are going to buy for the next 10 years. So like milk, eggs, um, you know, batteries, stuff like that. So that, you know, that people are still buying it and that, that you see inflation and not other things that are happening in the economy, right? So um, <clears throat> that would manipulate the prices. So um, and then you're going to track those same products, right? So you're going to go to the cash register and you see, okay, to buy all these goods cost me a hundred dollars five years ago. And then, uh, you know, as time goes on, you'll see that the price of those goods increase, right? And so you want to, or decrease or whatever's happening in the market, right? But, uh, you want to see the increase and see what the inflation rate is based off that. So now, <sighs> How can we, uh, so looking at the inflation rate, we would look at um, the percentage change from year to year, right? And so uh, we'll use an equation for that. And then price indices is just a number that's going to be assigned to that uh, with a base year of 100, right? So we're able to see how much inflation has occurred since the base year, right? So uh, the inflation rate is going to be able, we're going to be able to compare from like, let's say the year before to this year, right? And then um, the, uh, the price indice is going to give us a base year and we'll be able to compare prices from the base year, right? All right. So the first price indice that we're going to look at is the uh, CPI, and that is the most commonly used uh, measurement of inflation, right? And so how do we get the, uh, how do we get the base year, right? Well, or how do we get the CPI is we take the price Price of market basket. And then price of market basket in base year. And of course, we're going to multiply that by 100. And that will equal our CPI. Okay. So, you're going to look at the the CPI will equal the um, will equal price of the market basket, right? Over the price of the market basket in the base year times a hundred. Okay, and so um, and that's the equation for CPI. All right. Um, And then how do we obtain the inflation rate? Well, it's the same equation that we've used before, right? And that was to get the, uh, the uh, rate of uh, the percentage change for our GDP, right, uh, from year to year. And if you remember from that video, it was uh, new minus old over old, right? And so that's the inflation rate. So I'm just going to abbreviate these. And CPI was market basket over market basket and base year. Times 100. Okay. So uh, new over old minus old, I'm sorry, new minus old over old, so no over O gives us that uh, percentage uh, rate increase, right? Or percentage rate change. And then um, C, uh, CPI, right, is market basket. And then over the market basket in the base year times 100 will give us the uh, CPI for that year. Um, okay, now there are some problems with CPI. It's not a perfect, uh, you know, just like everything else in economics, it's not uh, absolutely perfect, just like GDP, right? Um, we do have some uh, like some substitution bias when uh, price for uh, fixed market baskets. Uh, let's see, consumers buy less of those products and more of substitutions. 
that may be part of the uh, market basket, right? So uh, think of like right now there's a lot of, you know, let's go to um, plant-based dieting, right? And that plant-based dieting might have some effect on like let's say milk or eggs and stuff like that. And if those items are included in the market basket and we go back from 1980, we'll then, uh, you know, we're not, maybe we don't have an accurate telling of what's happening to the inflation rate, right? Um, now, uh, next thing is new products, right? So like if we're looking, uh, 1980, 1982 is usually generally when a base year that a lot of uh, economists like to use. Um, but 1982, uh, there was no iPhone, right? Or cell phone for that matter, I don't think. Um, so, um, you know, you cannot put in like an iPhone 10 if we're looking at the base year of 1980, right? Because it's just what's around back there. So that's another problem. And then uh, product quality, right? So uh, CPI ignores both improvements and declines in product quality, right? So, uh, you know, if, if, if we were to start like with, I, I think it was like 2006 or whenever iPhones came out, right? Um, then... If that was the year that we want and we want to include an iPhone in the market basket, well, iPhones have gotten A, more expensive, right? But they've also gotten significantly better since that first iPhone that came out. So, um, you know, it kind of ignores that fact um, in, the, in the equation for CPI, right? So again, things that we don't see in CPI is the substitution bias, new products that could be in the, on the market, and then product quality. And then, so that's going to be it for uh, units or topic 2.4. Again, price indices and inflation. The thing, three things that we covered was inflation, uh, dis deflation, disinflation, uh, CPI, and then the substitutions by and with the limitations of uh, CPI. Uh, all right, guys. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you guys in class. See you.